Hey, Grace Quotes, thanks again for tuning in. As you know, last time we were together, uh, we started this little two-part series on grace and truth. John 14, 16, uh, Jesus came full of grace and truth. And as I mentioned to you, uh, we must be like Jesus, always full of grace and always full of truth. And quite often in the church, uh, we see one or the other. And quite often in the church, even when we see one or the other, it's not demonstrated in the winnable and attractive uh, and pleasant ways that Christ did. Uh, last week, we talked about that Jesus was full of grace. And we said that if we truly understand what Christ has done for us, uh, if we truly understand that we were children of wrath, deserving uh, hell, and Christ at his own expense uh, suffered unimaginable uh, uh, torture, uh, abandonment from the Father, spiritual rejection, uh, shame, uh, all that we might um, receive his forgiveness as he would take our sin upon himself. That is, of course, the epitome of grace. And if we understand that, uh, we will demonstrate that grace to one another. Uh, but today, in this part two, I want to talk about what truth is and kind of how they all come together. Uh, we know it says in Scripture, John 14, 7, that Jesus is the truth. Uh, when you want to find truth, you just look to Jesus. He is the definition of truth. It says in John 17, 17, that his word is truth. God is all about truth, uh, an absolute truth that is based upon his character. To the contrary, John 8, 44 says that Satan is the father of lies. Uh, Satan does, does not like truth. And he wants to deceive people in believing that truth can be moldable, uh, that truth can be subjective, uh, that truth is open to a, a various numbers, number of opinions, uh, that truth is based upon what popularity or culture dictates, uh, that truth is even impossible to understand. Uh, we have a problem in our church of people that do not want to be engaged with truth. Uh, they will um, be permissive and not discipline their children and say they're just trying to be nice and exercise grace with their kids. Or they're ashamed to speak of the gospel, uh, which is truth, a requirement of us. Uh, because again, in the name of grace, they don't want to offend other people. Or pastors that will not preach the whole counsel of God and talk about things like repentance and hell and church discipline and sin and accountability. Because again, they do it in the name of grace. Uh, these are wrong ways to demonstrate truth. We must be engaged in truth, and we must also do it in a way that exercises grace. Jesus did them both. Jesus never lowered the bar on each of them, and we must follow in his footsteps. So I jotted down some ideas that we as a church, I think, can consider as we try to mold grace and truth together. Here's my question for you. Why can't we be people that help the needy, which would be grace, but at the same time, promote a healthy work ethic, which would promote truth. Uh, why can't we be people that oppose greed and promote the proper stewardship of the environment, while at the same time also oppose the anti-industry, new age environmental movement? Why can't we share that God's condemnation is upon all forms of sexual immorality but yet at the same time with compassion, help those that are trapped in these lifestyles and those people that might be receiving the consequences of those lifestyles with physical illnesses. Why can't we stand for justice, but still at the same time show forgiveness to those who sin against us, knowing that our offenses against God are always much worse than another's offense against me? Why can't we at the same time share the gospel with the community but also in our churches, open up food pantries and feed the community at the same time. Why can't we teach children in the community the Bible, but yet also offer things like sports clinics and VBSs? Why can't we condemn abortion and at the same time support ladies that have unexpected pregnancies and engage in adoption and promoting life in all that we do? Why can't we denounce radical Muslim terrorism, but yet also at the same time seek to win them to Christ and help the brothers and sisters overseas that are being persecuted through their hands? Why can't we stand um, up for what is right, but do it in a way that is gentle and with self-control and in love? You know, the early Christians built hospitals and colleges. They built hospitals to show grace. They built colleges to teach truth. Remember, Jesus was full of grace and truth. 
When that woman came to him that was caught in adultery, what did he say? He said, your sins are forgiven you. But he also said, go and sin no more. May we be like Christ. May we be Christians that are full of grace and truth.